Hello, I'm Frost on behalf of ActivityNet Challenge Committee 2021. In this video, I will give an introduction on temporal action localization task. Then I will announce the winners of this year. Well, let's start by defining the task. In temporal action localization, we care about two questions, when and what. When is the activity happening? and what activity is happening. As us human beings, uh, we can answer the questions easily. For example, given the video, we can say um, the activity is long jump. And the actor start her activity at 1.20 to 1.32. Then she has the same activity from 1.43 to 1.59, and so on. However, this question is not such easy to answer by an intelligent system. So in the task, we are expecting a localization system uh, which has an input of long untrimmed video and its output is a temporally localized activity, meaning it should returns the activity class and the start and the end time. Our goal is to encourage the development of the automated system to recognize and localize human activities in videos. We would like to see the automated system push the limits of human activity understanding and eventually benefit our society. For example, we can integrate a temporal action localization system in the live stream to prevent unexpected activities such as suicide, violence, or pornography. Also, the system can be equipped on surveillance cameras to detect abnormal activities. Another application example would be the following. Google search has the feature that supports finding instructions in videos. If you Google how to vacuum a pool in your web browser, you can see the activity is automatically localized as a result. However, if we Google how to vacuum a mattress, it will only suggest you to buy a vacuum machine online. An automated system with better human activity understanding can extend this feature to support more activities for search and retrieval. Now let's talk about the solutions to the localization problem. What are the state-of-the-art methods to do temporal action localization, and how do they reach the state-of-the-art performance? Current methods can be generally categorized into three paradigms. Figure A shows the bottom-up paradigm. It classifies each single video frame or snippet and post-processes the classification score to produce action prediction. In Figure B, we have the top-down fashion that generates temporal action proposals from the video and then evaluates the confidence scores of proposals respectively or simultaneously. We can also do it end-to-end, -end, as shown in Figure C, where the actions are directly detected from the untrimmed video input. According to the participant submissions over the past few years, we always see methods from these three paradigms, or their combination. Before talking about the challenge results, I would like to share some statistics of our dataset here. The ActivityNet version 1.3 dataset contains 700 hours of video. Those videos record human activity from 200 activity categories. And we have a total of 23,000 activity instances in the dataset. Now let's see the submissions from this year. Our server 
evaluate the submission by temporal mean average precision. For any prediction in the submission file, it is marked as positive if the TLU, the temporal intersection of a union, is greater than some alpha. Otherwise, it's considered as a false positive. We average the mean average precision at 10 different alpha values from 0.5 to 0.95. Also, only one prediction must match with the ground truth. That means we penalize the duplicate predictions at the evaluation time. If you have participated in our last year workshop, our first prize was awarded to a team from Huazhong University of Science and Technology who achieved the score of 42.8% average MAP. Now let's see the performance of this year's winners. The third team is from University of Sydney who achieved 39.95% average MAP. The second team is from Huawei Canada, who achieved 44.11% average MAP. This is already higher than the performance from last year winners. The first winner is from a team of Huazhong University of Science and Technology and Alibaba, who achieved 44.67%. They overperformed the second team by 0.5%. Congratulations to all the teams. Later, our winner team will share their method in the following videos. It is the second time that Huazhong University of Science and Technology wins the first prize in the temporal action localization track. Then, Huawei Canada will also talk about their approach. This is the first time for this team to participate in our challenge. They have a very high rankings and their scores are very close to the first winner. Hello everyone. We are a team from Huazong University of Science and Technology and Alibaba Group. I am Xiang Wang from Huazong University of Science and Technology. It's my pleasure to give a report on CVPR ActiveNet Temporal Action Localization Challenge. Task Description Given a long untrimmed video, the task of temporal action detection is to localize intervals where actions of interest take place and also predict the action categories. Start End Category. Here, I will introduce the metrics of temporal action detection task. AUC. AUC is used to evaluate the relation between report and proposal number on activity net. Here under the ARVSANCOM is used as metrics where AN varies from 0 to 100. MAP. MAP is used as a variation metric, where AP is calculated on each action class respectively. On activity net, average MAP with IOU shadows set of 1.5 to 1.95 with a step of 0 0.05 are used. One of the mainstream algorithms is BMN. Given an untrimmed video, BMN can simultaneously generate a boundary probability sequence to concentrate proposals and boundary matching confidence map to dense evaluate confidence of all proposals. GTAD is also a mainstream algorithm. GTAD provides a GCN model to adaptively incorporate multi-level semantic context into video features 
and cost temporal action detection as a subgraph localization problem. They treat video SNPs as graph nodes. SNP SNP correlations as eagles and actions associated with context as target subgraphs. Now, we introduce our proposal relation network for temporal action detection. The motivation is recently bottom up proposal generation methods can generate proposals with a precious boundary but can't effectively generate adequate reliable confidence scores for retrieval proposals. We design a proposal relation module to capture the relations amongst the proposal by non-local operators, and the sets can better model long temporal relationships. The overall architecture of our solution is using a pre-trained model, we extract the clip features for the input video, which are then fitted into the data augmentation module. Subsequently, we feed the enhanced feature into a proposal generation network to obtain the confidence map and then generate a proposal. Finally, the proposal are input into a proposal relation module to capture the relations and output a reliable and accurate proposal. Here, we introduce the backbones we used in the competition. Slowfast. Slowfast network was proposed for action recognition task by combining a fast and a slow branch. CSN. CSN aims to reduce the parameters of 3D convolution and extract useful information by finding important channels. YYT. YYT is a pure transformer based model for action recognition. In the data augmentation module, we reuse the perturbation in our SSTAP as the feature augmentation. The temporal feature shift is a channel shift panel including two operates such as the forward movement and background movement in the channel of the feature map. This module can improve the robustness of the models. Now, we show the classification results. In the competition, we used the SlowFast 101 pre-trained on Kinetics 400 and the SlowFast 152 to pretend on kinetics 700 and CSN pretend on kinetics 400 YYT pretend on kinetics 700 and the example results achieved 93.6% which is 1.8% higher than last year. Know that we also used the last year champion's results for multimodal classification fusion. Now we show the proposal results. We compare our PRN with BMN under the same feature setting. We can see that our PRN is 0.9% higher than BMN in terms of AUC. Now we show the detection results. In order to demonstrate the effectiveness of our PRN, we conduct experiments with different features, as shown in the table. The results show that the proposed PRN shows stronger performance on multi-different features. Moreover, 
the proposed PRN can gain about uh, 1.3% than BMN in terms of average MAP. Then, we assembled all the results and reached 42% on the validation set and 44.7% on the test set. Finally, we could draw the following conclusions. First, transformer-based YIYT shows very strong performance on classification tasks, but unsatisfactory on detection tasks when compared with CNN models. The reason may be that the transformer tends to capture global information by self-attention operate. Hence, it loses local information, which is also important for detection task. Second, the model performs well on classification task may not achieve better performance on the detection task, such as the fast one. 52 exceed slow factor 101 by 0.8% for classification, but suffers 1.8% job for detection. Thank you for thank you for your listening. Hi everyone. I'm Deepak Srizar. I'm happy to present our work on action localization in this year's Activity Net Challenge workshop. Action localization via complementary learning and class semantic based attention mechanisms. This work was done by myself, Srikant Murlidharan, Niamal Kwada, Yashin Lee, Peng Dai, and Jue Lu. Yeah, from the Noah's Ark Laboratory, Huawei, Canada. Our team secured the second place in the temporal action localization task. So to go into the brief introduction, action localization involves predicting the start and the end points in a video <clears throat> and also classify the action. So there are three main paradigms under which this is done. First one involves training frame level classifiers and then merging or smoothing the predictions to get the final proposals. The second one involves training proposal and the classification model separately and then combining them at the end. The third one involves end-to-end -end solution which uh, predicts and uh, classifies the proposals directly from the untrimmed video frames. So our solution follows the two-stage approach where we train the localization and the classification model separately. So the end-to-end -end solution for action detection uh, has not uh, been promising as compared to the two-state solutions. So we use the two-state solutions in our approach. So the common practice uh, for the two-state solution involves the following three subtasks, where uh, we first extract the features for the entire video, which is the representation for the videos. So this can be, this can be done using pre-trained video understanding models from different data sets. The second one involves proposal generation using these extracted features, which is the action localization. And uh, action localization can be done using top-down and bottom-up approaches uh, in the existing literature. The third one involves training the classification models to predict the action classes for each of these proposals. And the action classification system can be done using trimmed or untrimmed classifiers, which involves either trimmed clips or the entire video input. To go into our methods, so our solution involves exploring complementary aspects and then learn from the diverse perspectives. Uh, so we try to learn from the diverse settings for all the three components which is mentioned before. So for video feature encoding, 
we encode the videos uh, features using diverse network architectures and learning settings and for the action localization system we use diverse components uh, in order to learn complementary features and also use different uh, subsets of the feature encoders uh, some of the modules uh, which we use include the attention modules and position encoding and for the video classifier system uh, it usually involves learning from RGB and flow inputs and as well as from the aggregated trimmed classifier penultimate outputs. So the video classification can also be done with the different network architectures. So in our solution, so we employ a two-stage classification approach uh, which can be uh, interpreted being complementary in terms of the input receptive field. So for the trim classification, we use uh, input RGB or the optical flow frames for a trimmed part of the video. And for the untrimmed classification, we use the entire features for the whole video. So for the trim classification, we use the baseline model as the TSM ResNet 50 which achieves a single crop accuracy of 74%. So we improve this uh, model by further using weight excitation uh, and uh, also using data augmentation from kinetics and hacks data sets. So this improves the top one accuracy to 80.6%. We also use other top models such as slow fast and uh, coarse to find architectures uh, together with uh, the TSM ResNet 101 for flow features as well. For the stage two with the untrimmed classification, we use uh, complementary sets of features to learn the classification representation using logistic regression and uh, also add uh, <coughs> attention models to that. We also try different uh, variants of transformer models and we also use uh, different complementary loss functions such as focal loss and uh, weighted cross entropy losses. So for in terms of extracting the complementary features from these trained action classification models, we extract the uh, class semantic rich output layer features as well as the penultimate features. So we use both RGB and flow based features we also extract uh, multi-scale features from these models and uh, we also use uh, different action classification models such as Lofast, X3D, Kerad, something something. In addition to that, uh, we also use the recent publicly released uh, TSP model which is uh, more localization rich features and we also explore some self-serve supervised feature representations from multimodal versatile network features and uh, mill mass con contrastive estimation features. So with regard to the action localization, most of the prior uh, <coughs> video feature encoding use this class semantic rich information in order to localize the actions. However, such features are not optimal for localization tasks. And so work such as TSP and BSP exploit that and uh, train features for localization tasks. So our main research problem is that can we use these class semantic rich uh, video feature representations to formulate an attention mechanism that can improve the action localization performance. Different from the prior works, we try to improve these features uh, from the extracted pre-trained pre uh, cl action classification models rather than uh, using the new training methods. So our method involves attending to the input features for the action localization. So we propose an attention module that estimates the per class semantics and the per time step attention weights independently and applies them onto the localization encoder subnetwork. So such an attention mechanism can identify the temporal positions which are important for boundary detection 
based on these temporal variations of the class semantics. So on the architecture of a proposed uh, class semantic attention mechanism is shown here. Here uh, we consider the system and decompose into three components, the feature extraction from the RGB or flow frames and the localization base network and finally the localization decoder which involves predicting the start and the end points. So uh, we apply our attention mechanism onto the localization encoder base network where we apply the attention along the channel and the temporal axis. So this uh, improves the features and it aligns more towards the localization task. And this method is generic and so this can be integrated to prior action detection models. So since BMN is a <clears throat> high performing action proposal generation model, we use it as the baseline. So we apply the CSA attention to BMN to improve the detection performance. In addition to that, in order to further improve the localization performance, we consider these four perspectives where we modulate the uh, training methods, model parameters, model configurations, and using different set of features. So brief overview of our method is shown here. So for the loss functions, we try different loss functions, including contrastive loss, focal loss, learning to rank loss from object detection, and duration-based weighting for the IOU regression loss. In terms of uh, model parameter tuning, we try different uh, hidden dimensions and sample points and different depths for the base modules. And uh, in terms of model configurations, we try different attention mechanisms such as relation aware modules, position encoding, and our own uh, class semantic attentions. And additionally, we also transform the input features to 2D and then obtain the attention weights using this CSA branch. So here we use 2D convolutions instead of 1D. And this uh, operates on the local class temporal features, which provides uh, more complementary outputs. And instead of 2D convolutions, we also try vision transformers, such as VAT and SWIN transformers. And uh, for the feature encoders, we try different set of uh, features extracted from different action classification networks, which was mentioned before. So in terms of ensemble approach, we uh, do average ensemble of the feature map outputs. The weighted ensemble approach can give better results, but we observed overfitting with that. And the inference follows the standard BMN pipeline. Uh, where we multiply the classification and regression scores. In terms of post-processing, we use soft NMS for removing the redundant proposals with a threshold of 0.4. And uh, we use the top three classification outputs for the final proposals. So in terms of results, uh, our uh, stage one ensemble yields around 90.68% top one accuracy, while stage two ensemble improves that to 92% top one accuracy. So here we list a different set of features which we use for classification models. So for the action localization, uh, in incorporating the CSA attention and uh, the other variants which I described before, achieves the single best state of the art model of 39.16 using our classifier. And an ensemble of 30 of these uh, variants achieves 41.74 validation MAP and 44.11 test MAP, which secures us the second place. To summarize, the second class uh, classification further improves the ensemble and pushes the accuracy further. So for complementary aspect is essential for building the good ensemble and uh, good video features are key to that. Our class semantic based attention mechanism provides complementary outputs using the different variants which you described. And in terms of post-processing, tuning the hyperparameters can give some uh, notable improvements as well.
so we would also like to thank our collaborators who provided valuable inputs and suggestions for improving the submission. Thank you.